ಧರ್ನಿವೇಶರಮಣೀಯ ದರ್ಶನ ಮಂದಹಾಸರುಚಿರಾಜ ಪೂಜಿತ ಸುರನರೋತ್ತಮೇರ್ಮುದ ಧರ್ಮನಂದನಮಹಂ ವಿಚಿಂತ ಧರ್ಮನಂದನಮಹಂ ವಿಚಿಂತ ಶ್ರೀಘನ್ ಶ್ಯಾಮ್ ಮಹಾರಾಜನೀ ಜಯ ಸುಪ್ರೀಮ್ ಆಲ್ ಮೈಟ್ ಓಲ್ಡ್ ಬಿಲ್ ಔಟ್ ಗನ್ಸ್ಯಾಮ್ ಮಹಾರಾಜ್ ಪಾಥ್ ಮೇ ಕಟ್ ಓಲ್ ಲಿಬ್ರೇಷನ್ ಪೂಜ್ಯ ಪಾತ್ ಗುರುಜಿ ನಾಲ್ ಆಫ್ ವಿಡಿಯೋ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಜೈ ಸ್ವಾಮಿನಾರಾಯಣ ಆಸ್ ವಿ ನೋ ಟು ವಾಕ್ ಆನ್ ದ ಪಾತ್ ಆಫ್ ಲಿಬ್ರೇಷನ್ ವಿ ನೀಡ್ ಸಮ್ಸ್ ಹ್ಯಾಲ್ಪ್ ನಾಟ್ ಆನ್ಲಿ ವಿ ನೀಡ್ ಎ ಹ್ಯಾಲ್ಪ್ ಬಟ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ವಿ ಶುಡ್ ಬಿ ಅವೇರ್ ಆಫ್ ಸಮ್ ಒನ್ ಹೂ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಆಲ್ರೆಡಿ ವಾಕ್ ಆನ್ ದಟ್ ಪಾತ್ by experience by listening or by reading the someone's experience for the same path we can we can also walk on that path without any kind of problems or with difficulties just as now the people mostly uh, most of the indian people they are using uh, instead of google maps they are using the wages that's a new social app they have developed by which they can uh, get the information regarding where uh, where the police was or well we, where will they attain uh, any kind of like problems uh, on the way where is any like crashes or something on the road so in this way they can know by using this app in the same way if we listen if we read if we know about the previous devotee's life then we can also understand what will be the hindrance what will be the benefit or what will be the chance or opportunity to get something on the way of bhagwan why because they have already passed that way and they successfully reach up to the divine abode of aksardham and they ultimately uh, make bhagwan please and because of that they they have attained the highest enlightenment and that is why we can also walk on that path and if we listen if we know about their life then we can get benefit we can at least understand the path in previous katha we have uh, understand about the higher spirituality of gordon bai how he had attained the higher spirituality by the grace of his guru ramanand swami as well as by the grace of bhagwan swami narayan and finally how for him the salt and sugar both become same now today we are going to know something about parvat bai parvat bai was a devotee of nath bhagwan swami narayan from the beginning but he was also like the gordan bai he was also a devotee of raman and swami gordan bai raman and swami muktan and swami mayaram bhat and many other devotees many other santos they were from the time of raman and swami they believed raman and swami as the god himself now along with the muktan and swami parvat bai's understanding was also the same like my guru ramanand swami is the form of bhagwan himself and even though they are doing bhajan of lord sri krishna still they are believing the very form in the form of ramanand swami that that was their understanding that was their form an uncompromising uncom- faith in their guru and because of that even though ramanand swami was not the form of god even though he himself meaning ramanand swami himself said i am not a form of bhagwan but i am his servant and bhagwan himself will come later so even though he was narrating these things many times during his discourses still the followers believed ramanand swami as the form of god and as ramanand swami was the true guru ramanand swami was the uh he was from the divine abode of aksardham and that is why those people who believed ramanand swami as the form of god they all understood the real 
form of Bhagwan in the form of Maharaj when he came later. And those who didn't believe Ramanan Swami as the form of God, they do they they will not understood Bhagwan Swaminarayan's divine form and his divine glory. Now in the life of Purodhbhai there were many many incidents happen and there were like many incidents by which we can understand something we can learn in our life that how to worship Bhagwan, how to offer our devotion to him, how to do uh, how to do his darshan, how to listen his katha. In these are many things we can learn from Purodhbhai's life. Parutvai was also like uh, from the very simple and humble family. Parutvai's main occupation is the farming and he was living in Agatrai that was also situated in Sorat, meaning near the Junagar. So Parutvai became a devotee of Ramanan Swami after uh, accepting his refuge after his association he understood many things in the spirituality and finally only because of his guru's grace meaning Ramana Swami's grace he gradually grow his uh, spirituality and his understanding regarding Bhagwan day after day and finally as Ramana Swami before he went to Ak- Aksardham he announced to all of his duties that <coughs> uh, Sahajanan Swami who he had announced as the next guru of his fellowship, uh, he announced for the devotees that he, meaning Sahajan and Swami, is not only a uh, renunciant, meaning he's, he, he's not only the sadhu, but he is the God himself, and he is the supreme personality of Godhead, and uh, there were countless millions of servants like me worshipping him day and night in the Aksardham. So when Ramanan Swami had announced these things to the devotees, so the most of the devotees are convinced regarding the form of Sriji Maharaj. But still, there were many devotees who didn't convince about Bhagwan Swaminarayan's divine form. And that's why Bhagwan Swaminarayan himself had, had turned on the chapter of Samadhi, or we can say the he, he makes something divine that uh, merely by doing his darshan, merely by touching him, or merely by listening his voice, all of those devotees or non devotees, they all were sent to the uh, sent into the samadhi. During the samadhi, those who were the devotees of Bhagwan Sri Krishna, they get the darshan of Lord Sri Krishna in the divine about Golok. Those who were the devotees of Lord Sri Ram, they they went to the uh, divine abode of Vaikunt and they get their uh, get the darshan of Lord Sri Ram there uh, and those who are Muslim they won't get the darshan of their Allah their Paygambar and those who were the duties of Lord Sri Granis they also get their darshan in his apart so in this way those who were the duty of or whatever the belief one has those all people get their Darshan. Those who believe the God has no form, God has only uh, God is only the divine light. So those people they also get the darshan of the divine light. So in this way, Bhagwan shows this miracle. And in in the age of Kali, me- meaning in the Kali, there there is no possibility of such kind of miracles, and instead as the people they themselves experience such kind of divinity so they all believe Bhagwan Swaminarayan is the Lord of Lords and he is the Supreme God so even though he had some such kind of divine miracles still Parodhbhai's understanding regarding the form of his Guru Raman and Swami is form and so along with, along with Muktan and Swami he didn't accept these things and when Ramanan Swami divinely gave darshan to Muktanan Swami and uh, gave him a message that Sahajan Swami is the form of uh, the supreme reality, he is the supreme God, then as Muktanan Swami had convinced and he uh, explained this glory of Bhagavan Swami to Parodhbhai, then Parodhbhai was convinced about Bhagavan Swami and his true 
form and his greatness and after getting this from muktanand swami and muktanand swami's association parudva become a staunch devotee of bhagwan swami narayan and throughout his life he had uh, he had worshiped bhagwan swami narayan and he had performed his devotion for bhagwan swami narayan by his full heart meaning with full dedication and full devotion as you know ramanand swami had too much uh, he had like uh, even though he was very strong by nature still he had a uh, staunch or we can say the strong compensation for the needy so he had developed and he had established the arm houses for, uh, for in the many villages like lodge and many other places he had established arms houses so there the santos they were collecting grains and other grains flowers and many other things from the villagers or from the other villages and they collected those things at one place and those who are really needed uh, those things the santo provided food uh, grains flowers and all those things to the needy people so in this way raman swami had established some arms houses and when bhagwan swami narayan become the head of the fellowship at that time from the beginning maharaj had also developed many other arms houses in different different places so once there were no any grains remain in the arms house at lodge so at that time muktanand swami was handling the ashram so he was the head of the branches uh, he was the head of that uh, lodge branch and because of that he had the responsibility to maintain the stock of the grains for the needy people but at the time anyhow the stock was not in hand and so they really need the grains now muktanand swami went to parvat bhai to agatrai there he talked parvat bhai regarding the situation so parvat bhai immediately uh immediately sent all of the stock he had preserved for his use throughout the year so he had sent all those grains to the lodge that was parvat bhai's understanding and even he didn't kept anything for himself so when sri ji marad knew about this then parvat bhai when parvat bhai came to garuda for his darshan at the time maharaj himself asked him parvat bhai why didn't you took anything for yourself why you don't keep anything for you or your family or your son then parvat bhai said maharaj i myself work hard or and because of that i will get the another grains or if i can get the grains on my credit but i have to give whatever with me i have to give the, all those things for the sake of bhagwan and sant that was parvatwa's understanding and so in this way even though maharaj requested him to keep something for himself and his family still parvat bhai denied and he said maharaj i have get this opportunity to uh, donate my grains for the sake of santos and for the sake of needy people so i have gave all all those the grains whatever i had and so i didn't take anything back so in this way parvat bhai's understanding is donating everything for the sake of satsang even though maharaj or muktanand swami they didn't ask for everything still as he got the opportunity to donate he had donated everything not only that but what the other kind of understanding this is his understanding regarding the donation regarding the dedication now while listening while studying the another incident from his life we can get the another things in our life once along with mayaram but uh, parvat bhai uh, parvat bhai and his family they went to the garuda for doing darshan of maharaj 
there after getting maharaj darshan they decided to stay there for 7 days because there were katha parayan was uh, uh, done by santos and that's why uh, parod bhai and the other his family members they desired to stay there for several days so parod bhai decided to stay there for 7 days but at the time parod bhai was staying in front of maharaj he was like sitting throughout the day in front of maharaj and during the katha time during maharaj was giving discourses as well as some other santos they were narrating divine episodes from the life of maharaj as well as some satsang related talks parodbhai was listening along with other devotees and santos but at the time of lunch and at the time of dinner the one after one santos and devotees they visited the kitchen for taking some meal but instead of wasting his time for taking meal parodbhai is staying in front of maharaj and he was doing his darshan and when maharaj himself went to take lunch or dinner or take rest at the time parodbhai was sitting there he was memorizing maharaj murti in his heart as well as he was like repeating what uh, he had listened during the katha in his mind in this way he passed his time he passed his days for listening remembering and memorizing maharaj's divine form as well as his words maharaj knew about his uh, situation because uh, parodba didn't take water or food on the other hand his family members his wife and the other members of his family they thought that parod bhai stay there with the maharaj so he definitely get the prasad from maharaj thard meaning he'll get the sanctified food from maharaj so they didn't ask him or they didn't even care for parod bhai on the other hand as the santos and murji brahmachari who was serving thard to bhagwan they also thought for another thing another way like parod bhai came here with his family so he definitely it he definitely take prasad with his family but instead of taking prasad either with the maharaj or with the family he didn't take anything no food no water for 7 days and he only doing darshan of maharaj once maharaj want to reveal this unflinching faith or the real thirst and quench for the darshan and katha of maharaj maharaj once asked during the sabha parod bhai where are you eating then parod bhai didn't say anything uh, but maharaj asked uh, mayaram bhat that where he ate then mayaram bhat asked his wife meaning parod bhai's wife that uh, parod bhai ate with you right then she said no i think uh, parod bhai was staying with maharaj so he ate his prasad then uh, mayaram bhat came back to maharaj and he said maharaj parod bhai didn't eat there the family members of parod bhai they thought that parod bhai stay with you so he definitely ate with you but maharaj said no then maharaj asked murji brahmachari that parod bhai ate here or not then murji brahmachar said no maharaj i was thinking that he was staying here in garda with his family so definitely he'll take prasad with his family maharaj already knew about this but maharaj wanted to show this incident to the others and that's why maharaj narrated this into the sabha and finally maharaj asked parod bhai parod bhai why you didn't take food and water for 7 days then parod bhai while folding his hands he said maharaj i'm doing your darshan the whole day when you are not he- present here under the neem tree in front of me at the time i was repeating the same darshan i have captured in my heart i remembering again and again that form that darshan now i also repeat the katha while there is no katha i was repeating the whatever i have listened from you or santo i am repeating that in my mind and in this way 
by listening katha and doing your darshan i pass my whole day and while doing these things i even do not uh, remember my thirst or hunger so in this way that was also parvat by like a uh, situation or we can say the sthiti uh, where he even didn't need food or water so while doing darshan of maharaj or while doing katha or discourses from the santo we should learn from parvat by his life that at least at that time we should forget the food and water not only food and water but we should also forget the other activities of our uh, routine or whatever we have or social activities or whatever we should forget those things and only focus our mind on the form of god as well as to in the listening of katha once again as maharaj was doing many many festivals many many celebrations here and there so once mayanam but and parvat bhai they both went to the darshan of maharaj in a village of mekpur there maharaj had celebrated a festival so they stay there for darshan of maharaj but while walking because at the time there was no any other particular way of transportation and that is why parvat bhai and mayanam but they were both, both walking towards uh, mekpur and while walking mayram but asked parvat bhai how did you do darshan of maharaj then parvat bhai said i am just doing his darshan nothing else then mayram but taught him the method of doing darshan of maharaj that we should first look at maharaj's divine form we should look at his clothes ornaments the beauty of his face how was his eyes his nose his cheeks his lips his ears everything we should look at those things and finally at the same time we should behold the form inside our heart and while closing our eyes we should realize the same form inside we should behold the same form inside so in this way mayanam but had taught these things to parvat bhai and parvat bhai also uh master the method of doing darshan from uh with the help of maram but and finally when they went to the uh, when they reached to the mekpur they do the darshan of maharaj and at the time parvat bhai he was sitting in front of maharaj when the other devotees one after one after doing darshan of maharaj they pass then even parvat bhai was sitting in front of maharaj sometimes he come closer to one uh, little after liter and as he close come to maharaj he was doing his darshan and at the same time he was beholding the same form inside his heart and while closing his eyes he he can see the same form what the form he had seen while his open eyes the same form he behold inside so in this way even practically he had mastered the method of doing darshan and finally maharaj asked him that uh how was your method to do darshan then parvat bhai narrated to the assembly that how i am doing darshan of maharaj and maharaj even become extremely pleased upon him and appreciated his method of doing darshan and after doing uh, after mastering this method of doing darshan parvat bhai interested to do meditation uh, on the form of maharaj and for that he was performing five times mansi puja first so he had a vow not to skip any of mansi puja but as he he was in front of maharaj or as he was staying with santo and maharaj in garda or any other place so at the time he had no any other particular activities or responsibility to perform so he can easily perform the mansi puja five times a day but when he was back to his village agadrai there 
he had to do the work in the field in the farm as he was a farmer so he had to do work in the farm so even though he was doing work but still he didn't want to skip any of his mansi puja so first mansi puja for wake up in maharaj he was performing in the puja but the next mansi puja he was doing when he was taking his lunch that's okay that's okay no problem but after that he had to do work in the farm so he had no time no extra free time to do the mansi puja at 3 or 4 pm so at the time as devote is doing this mansi puja for waking maharaj as maharaj was resting after taking his meal so he was resting and a devotee should wake up him and after giving him a bath if it is summer then giving him a bath uh, a devotee should offer some fruits some juice or something in this way when should perform the mansi puja but parvat bhai didn't get time to do to sit for the mansi puja and that's why once he was doing work in his farm and for that he had to he was uh, helping the other workers he was himself plowing the farm so as it was the time of wake up in maharaj uh, he was uh, doing mansi puja while plowing the farm while plowing with the help of the ox or bullock uh, parvat bhai was on the plow and he was <coughs> performing mansi puja while closing his eyes so the other worker he he was thinking like parvat bhai might be become very tired and that's why he was sleeping so the worker he loudly call parvat bhai's name as he wanted to wake him up but parvat bhai was not actually sleeping he was like uh, performing his mansi puja and in the mansi puja he was uh, after wake up in maharaj after giving him a bath he was uh, serving a meal to maharaj at that time there is no any particular uh, like varieties of food but parvat bhai was serving maharaj rotlo and dahi and uh at the time he was serving dahi with a bowl in his hands during uh, mansi puja he and physically he was plowing he was on the plow and he was uh his clothes were closed so his eyes were closed and at the time the other worker shouted parvat bhai parvat bhai so immediately parvat bhai clo- uh, opened his eyes and he was asking what happened so at the same time the worker found dai and rotlo on the field then he asked what's happened how is these things here so parvat bhai explained him that i was not sleeping i was doing mansi puja in my in mansi puja i was offering these things to maharaj i was serving him this food and as you call me so i open my eyes and uh because of my mansi puja i am offering these things to maharaj maharaj himself accepting these things and as you disturb me during my mansi puja so this thing happen meaning rotlo and dai uh fallen down from my hands so the worker he was convinced about parvat bhai's devotion that this is really a true devotee of bhagwan otherwise such things never happen as he was offering mentally and the things happen here physically so in this way we can understand parvat bhai's higher spirituality because while doing the work he had the form of maharaj remain in front of him meaning he was even though physically doing the other work still mentally he was focusing only and only on the form of bhagwan so in this way parvat bhai also understood that maharaj always remain with me so as he had interested in the meditation so now because of maharaj grace 
the form of Bhagwan remain in front of his eyes day and night. Yes, even night also. Even while dreaming, he can see the form of Bhagwan. Now, many times he had the darshan of Maharaj, but once a thought came to his mind that how was the form of Nrusi Bhagwan? As he had listened from the Katha, there were many avatars of Bhagwan and about the uh, it is uh, detailed description regarding the 24 avatars of Bhagwan in the Srimad Bhagwat. So he had listened the Katha from Bhagwat many times. So he had listened this incident and that's why he was thinking that how was the form of Nrusi, meaning half a body of human and half a body of lion. So how was this form was looking? So he was thinking in his mind, but nothing ha- nothing come to his mind. So even th- as his duty, as his occupation, he had to do work in the farm. So once he was doing farm, uh, he was doing work in the farm. At the time, he was thinking the news about the Nusi farm. So immediately. The divine form of Bhagwan Swami amidst the radiant and divine light came in front of his eyes. He was stopped for a while and he was doing Bhagwan's darshan. Now one after one, all 24 avatars came out of the divine form of Bhagwan Swami Narayan. And they were, while folded hands, they were praying to Bhagwan as Bhagwan Swami Narayan is the Supreme Lord. So the all 24 avatars, they were praying to Bhagwan. And in this way, Maharaj himself saw the Nrusi, Bhag- Nrusi Bhagwan's form as well as the other 23 forms to Parvodbhai. By this incident, we can understand Parvodbhai's higher spirituality that he can see Bhagwan's form whenever and wherever he desire to see. So he had cultivated these things by the practice of meditation as well as blessings of Maharaj himself because he had an Rajipo of Maharaj uh, by mastering the matter of doing his darshan. And there he even got blessings of Maharaj. And because of that, Bhagwan's divine form remained forever in front of his eyes. So now, as Bhagwan's divine form remained in front of his eyes, so Parodbhai definitely didn't like anything to do. And that's why he most of the time passed for the devotion. So once, as his farm was ready and still, at the time he desired to do uh, Darshan of Maharaj and that's why he, along with his family, went to Garuda for Maharaj Darshan. At that time, some thieves came at night at his farm. There, they tried to cut the uh, ready cops, and as they uh, try or as they cut some of and collected in their bags, at the same time, they were realizing that someone beating them. But as they turn back, no one there. So the thieves, they were talking with each other that someone is here. Someone is beating me. The other said, yes, I also experienced the same, meaning someone have also beat me. In this way, the all thieves realized that someone here. So immediately they run away from that corner and they thought, let we go to the another corner of the farm so we can get something from there. So in this way, when they try to steal the crops from the farm, another time as they begin their work, immediately they've experienced something, someone beating. On the another corner, they again, third time they try and the same experience happened, someone beating them. So finally they realize Parodbhai is a devotee of Bhagwan Swaminarayan. So definitely Bhagwan Swaminarayan in his divine form 
he's safeguarding this farm and all those thieves they run away from there in this way maharaj himself had securing the farm of parvat bhai why because parvat bhai always remain in the worship and devotion for him and that is why he also remain as parvat bhai was remain in bhagwan service so bhagwan remain in parvat bhai's service meaning safeguarding his farm then another incident when parvat bhai guard this that maharaj himself had to serve him meaning how to uh, bhagwan had to remain there in parvat bhai's farm for securing his not down in his demand from but still he had to do that work so so parvat bhai decided to fence the farm and for that he was in the jungle and he was uh, cutting the wood so with an axe he tried to cut the wood uh, at the time anyhow uh, the axe fell down on parvat bhai's leg but as he had shoes so his shoes was cut but not his leg but parvat bhai stopped there he was thinking for a while and then he returned to his home he was thinking that if i have no shoes and if really this axe cut if my uh, it had cut my legs then i have to sleep for at least a month so now i should understand like uh, bhagwan swami narayan had served uh, save me from cutting off my legs so i have to pass one month for his devotion understanding this parvat by himself went to garuda and he decided to stay there for a month and while staying there for a month he decided to listen a katha from the santo and maharaj when he was asking that this is a uh, this is a, a season to bowing saw uh, to for the farming so why are you coming here and why are you not staying at your village then parvat bhai said i understood the things that i was there in the uh, in the jungle and i'm cutting the wood and at the time axe fell down on my leg and maharaj protected me from cutting off my leg and because of that i understood he gave me a one month because if my cu- leg was cut then i have to take rest for at least a month and as bhagwan saved my leg so i have to give one month to him and that's why i come here to listen his katha for a month so in this way his understanding give us lesson that we should also understand in this way that even though we have a vacation we have a chance we have a time to worship him we should do that if we have a time we should go to mandir if we have a time should listen kathas from santo if we have a time to contact santo anyhow meaning via phone or any other means and we should remain in satsang we should remain in contact with the bhagwan and santo by anyhow then we can also attain the higher state like that of parvat bhai even though parvat bhai had attained the higher spiritual state still he desired to have a company of bhagwan and santo he even desired to listen the katha from bhagwan and santo so we should also do the same once parvat bhai was going from uh uh he was not actually going but before that he uh, once he received a letter from maharaj that parvat bhai please come to garuda and listen katha from santo so parvat bhai immediately left his village akatrai to listen katha and have darshan of maharaj so at that time his only son was very sick he was seriously ill and as parvat bhai left the village and he walked for a mile or two and his son passed away so one of his employee came after him and uh, he gave message that your son 
meet his death so please come come back to village and uh, complete his final rites and ritual meaning funeral and other things then parod bhai said now my only son passed away so he was now in akshardham if i'll i'll come back he'll not be alive he'll not come in his life so now you all go with the help of my relatives my family members you yourself perform the final rites and his funeral and other things and i am going to do darshan of my bhagwan in this way parod bhai even so this kind of understanding at the time of difficulty meaning when he even get the news that his only son was dead so still he was not going back to his home and instead he went to garuda for the darshan of maharaj and there in garuda maharaj himself became extremely pleased upon him and when he asked him that how was uh, your son he was ill so what happened to him even though maharaj was knowing everything but still he was asking him and at the time parod bhai said maharaj he was very happy because now he was in your akshardham so he was extremely happy and enjoying your divine and eternal bliss in your akshardham in this way parod bhai had understanding and he had like understanding meaning he was not this body he was beyond the body he was not a member of family he was a devotee of god this was his understanding so if by narrating by listening or by knowing this incident we can learn from parod bhai's life that we should also have the same kind of uh, devotion for bhagwan if we should have the same devotion for bhagwan then we will also enjoy the same bliss uh, like divine form remain in our eye, in front of our eyes in this way we can have all all kind of like spiritual harness or uh, spiritual elevated state we can attain just as parod bhai had attained in the same way we can even attain the pleasures of maharaj and santo if we try to con- uh, try to cultivate the same qualities which parod bhai had in our life then we can realize the same thing in our life by saying this my humble jai swami narayan shri ganshyam maharaj ni jai shri patim shri dharam sarva deveshwaram bhakti dharm atmajam vasudevam hare madavam keshavam kamadam karanam swami narayanam nilakantham bhaje shri ganshyam maharaj ni jai